Ready? Hey, everybody. This is part of our full-length primetime podcast. You can check it out on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, YouTube, plenty more. I hope you enjoy. Well, Brandon, we're going to move on. And, you know, for the first one, we took away the pack, added in a big. This time, we're going to keep the big, Brandon. We're erasing the 12. We're going to put a 10 in there. Actually, (laughs) we're just going to make it a B-I-G, but make the I look like a 1 and the G look like a 0. And we're talking about the Big 12. Big 10. Well, fuck that up. Big 10. <laughs> talking about the Big 10. And we're talking about the Michigan Wolverines. I had the segue complete in my head. And then, of course, it comes out of my fat mouth wrong. So we're talking about the Big 10 <laughs> and the Michigan Wolverines. And, Brandon, I'm going to get right to it. I'm just going to ask you the question like I always do. What do you think? Can the Michigan Wolverines make the playoffs this season? Yeah, they can. They can, but they are going to. You should just left it there. Yeah, they can. And then just left it. Didn't have to, or, didn't have to go or, on after or I, that. I, I could have I could have just gone. <laughs> yep. Yep. And then left me with nothing, right? Just leave me out to dry. I think that they can. I mean, take a look at what they did last season. Mm-hmm. They won. 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 Then they lost to Iowa. Then they beat Indiana. And then that very tough game at Ohio State where a lot of people still to this day, refs got it wrong, refs were terrible, made bad calls, this, that, and the other thing. But ultimately, Michigan did not make the college football playoff. And I think that everyone had them solidly in mm-hmm. the college football playoff for quite some time. I did. And I then, they were gonna make and then that game against Iowa, people can say what they want about that Ohio State game. It wouldn't have come down to that Ohio State game if they didn't lose against Iowa. Then they would have actually been ahead of Ohio State and probably would have been in the Big Ten title game. So can they do it? Can they make the playoffs this next year? Can they be successful again? Yes, they can because if they're playing teams like Rutgers and Illinois and if Michigan State's not back, if Maryland is still down... If Indiana is still, I mean, if you play teams like that, you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. But it's the games like Wisconsin. Wisconsin was good last year. We know Penn State is going to be coming for blood this season. Or at least we we expect them to. Mm-hmm. You and I both expect them you to. You said they were a team that needed to prove themselves last they do, week. They do need to prove themselves because of what happened last mm-hmm. year. You can't just come back and then flop. But Penn State, Wisconsin, Ohio State, there's three teams already that they played this past year. They'll play this next year. Those are three teams I'm already looking at that, hey, they could give you a run for, for your money. I'm even gonna throw Michigan State and Florida in there. Michigan State because well, last Florida for sure, yeah. Last year to me, Michigan State that was a weirdly not so good Michigan State season. We expect them to be at the top each and every year. Let's see if they come back to where they usually are. But Florida for sure. You start the year off against Florida at a neutral site. I think you lose that Florida game. Is your season? Totally wrong or totally dead in the water, as I'm going to say. No, but if you lose that Florida game, you're not making the college football playoff because there will be too much pressure on this team if you lose that Florida that Florida game. And one of the big points that people are making against the Wolverines this year, they only have, I can count on one hand, Brandon, one hand, how many starters they have returning. Five. Four on offense, one on defense. And to me, that is one of the big things that ever, like everything I hear about the Wolverines of why they won't make the playoffs is, oh, they don't have enough people returning. But to me, they have the most important position returning in quarterback, Mm -hmm. Wilton Spade. And then another thing, and I don't want to completely rest or hang my hat on this, but I'm going to make this comparison. Basketball is obviously a different sport. It's more individual, not as many people on the court for a team. But I look at Kentucky. How many times does Kentucky have guys, they're gone the next year? 
all the time. All the time, Kentucky has new players that are out there. Very, very, I'm going to say seldomly, do they have an upperclassman or a guy stay around for an extra year. Why can't we just assume that Jim Harbaugh has done his due diligence? It's not like because they've lost all these starters, it's not like, well, we're throwing freshmen out there to see what they can do. No, the guys who are going to replace the starters are going to be guys who were here last season that were still in the building, know the culture, know what's going on. I'm assuming Jim Harbaugh is a good coach and keeps everybody on the same page. He's proven to me he's a good coach with how much he has won, not just at the pro level, but at the collegiate level as well. I... I think that is not the biggest worry to me for this team. The biggest worry for me is that there are no veteran pass catchers for this offense. Because like I said, Wilton Spates is coming back. However, if you don't have any reliable targets to throw to, if they weren't okay, if they weren't playing Florida game one, if they were playing, let's say Give me a crap. Give me a crappy team. They're playing Kansas day one. Then I would say Kansas, Cincinnati, Air Force, Purdue, whatever. They'll figure it out. The veteran pass catchers won't hurt them. But they're playing Florida game one. You got to have wide receivers that you trust, that you trust. And I think that first game might be a little bit of a worrisome for the Wolverines because we might see some drops. We might see some, not miscommunications, but some, oh, I thought you were going to go that way, and you weren't going to go that way. You went the other way. We're going to see some miscues on offense because I think that first game we're going to see the communication, and not the communication, more so the familiarity with spades to the wide receiver. It's going to have to gel a little bit that first game. Question is, can they get through that first game? Because that's a big time opponent, big SEC opponent in Florida. You you know, you talk about uh, how they only have five guys re- returning mm-hmm. starters, and and then you you take a look through that offense. Jake Butt is gone. Amara Darbo is gone. Jehu Chesson is gone. Devion Smith is gone. So one thing uh, that they were talking about at their um, Spring game is a quarterback, Zach Gentry, four-star quarterback who came over from Texas. And this guy, 6'7", 244. I mean, guy is good. But he changes positions and goes to wide receiver. And... They're talking how this guy could be an X factor in the receiving game this year mm-hmm. for Michigan. And you've got a six seven guy that you could be throwing to after you lose all those other guys and Jake Butt is your safety blanket. If you could be able to go to Gentry and Gentry be able to make that switch, that's kind of that smooth transition from quarterback to wide receiver. Some guys can make it, some guys can't. And if he's able to do it smoothly, and then you give Wilton Spate that big target, that's going to help him out tremendously. Mm -hmm. Now, are there other holes? Sure. One big guy isn't going to do it. But to have that there would certainly be a help. Yeah, and I mean, to me, like I said, that's going to be the big question and the big thing that's beneficial to Michigan with all the questions that people have, like I'm looking right now in the ESPN article yet again, mentions how they only have five stars returning mentions the wide receiver. Um, Another point that the article makes is that um, expect the special teams to drop off only slightly better veteran prospects on the offensive line. Um, the defense, like I said, only bringing one starter back. The good thing for them, though, is I think Michigan, I think Michigan could lose the Florida game 
and still be okay to make the college football playoff. Like it, it, we're no longer in the days of the BCS where you got to win every game. If you lose one game, not a chance, not a chance to quote Patrick Kane that you get into the championship game. It's a little bit different. Now you can lose a game. Sometimes you can even lose two games and people still put you in the playoff hunt. I think Michigan, if they struggle that first game, I'm not saying they're going to lose that first game, but if they struggle that first game, having all these new guys in the starting lineup, the thing that benefits them is when you look at their schedule, their next three games to me, Cincinnati, Air Force, Purdue, all winnable games, two at home, one on the road, and going to Purdue is not that hard of a game. You also then have two more games before you get Penn State on the road. Then it starts to get a little bit harder. I mean, Rutgers is a throwaway game to me. Minnesota's going to be interesting now with P.J. Fleck as their head coach. That game is in Michigan, though. And Wisconsin and Ohio State, mainly Ohio State, it's at the end of the season. Those two games are your last two games. So I think there's a good chance that even if they do lose that Florida game, there's a good chance that... Michigan could use the next then two, three games, get everyone on the same page, three games, four games of experience, then kind of start to get a little bit of a role in Big Ten play before getting to that Ohio game. And if Florida's the only game you lose, if you win every other game, you're going to go to the Big Ten Conference Championship. And if you win that game, you set yourself up perfectly to then get into the college football playoff, even with losing that one game. I think Florida right off the bat is going to be a, a test. It's mm-hmm. going to be a significant I'm test. I'm glad they scheduled it. I think it's I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be a great game. I think Florida is a great team. I I, I am a big fan of Florida. I think that um I think that they're good. Um and I like them in basketball too. I don't know what what it is. Uh, maybe cuz I just want to go to Florida and live there. Because it's nice weather. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But you but... don't want to become a Jags or a Dolphins fan. Don't want to do any of that. That'd just be that'd no. be just setting yourself up for torture. But I know being a Bears fan ain't that far off. No, not much fun. <laughs> um, but I think that we're going to see a different game mm-hmm. against Penn State. Last year, Michigan blew them out, forty-nine yeah. to ten. I think it's going to be closer. Forty-nine to ten, and Penn State. Almost made the college football playoff and was complaining <laughs> when they didn't. Ricky, this is a changed team. Mm-hmm. This is a changed team. Trace McSwirly. Swirls. Look out, look out for him. He's going to be a very good quarterback. He already is. Mm-hmm. And he's going to make his team even better this season with Penn State. So that's going to be a game you watch for. Florida's a game you watch for. Penn State's a game you watch for. Wisconsin and Ohio State, those are the games that I am watching for. But those are four games on their schedule that are going to be difficult. As of, as looking at it right now, knowing what we know, no injuries, no no, those are going to be good, difficult, mm-hmm. hard-fought games. It, they're, they're not going to be... Not that I foresee blowouts on either side. I think that uh, Michigan is going to have more tests this season. But I think that that's a good thing for Michigan. It tests them, makes them hopefully get better at the end of the day. Because how many blowouts did they have last year? So a many. Lot. It wasn't even fun. It wasn't even fun for anybody. Mm-hmm. For a little bit, we thought Colorado was going to beat them. They're up 28 nothing. They lost 45-28. to The hell. But... I think that this is going to be an interesting season for Michigan. But like you said, I think that Harbaugh, he's a trusted coach. He knows what he's doing. His players trust him. They want to play for him. I think he's going to be just fine with only five returning starters coming back. That's going to be fine. And the last thing I kind of want to bring up, and I, I agree with you, I think that Michigan will be fine. I, I'm not sure about that Florida game, only because the new starters might need some time to gel. We might see what you talked about with Sam Darnold, where that first half might not be the best for Michigan football. And then hopefully they kind of gel in the second half. The games that you mentioned, the Ohio, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Penn State, I'm going to throw Minnesota on top of it. I think yeah, that's going to yeah, be you can. You can. a good game. 
as well. And Michigan State's going to be funny to me. I, I want to see what we get from the Spartans this year. But the last yeah. point yeah. I want to make about Michigan is on offense, there's going to be a lot more, pre- I'm going to say, pressure on Wilton Spates. And the reason why is you're one of the big returning pieces and you will play the most important position on the football team. He's got to rally the troops. He's got to bring them together. He's got to be the one to bring this team wins in the regular season. And the one thing I will say I liked from Wilton Spate is a quote that he said, he's like, I don't want to compare us because we're not the same, but he's like, it's like Tom Brady. He was asked a question. He goes, it's like Tom Brady said after winning the Super Bowl is he's like, I play every practice, every down, every like lift in the weight room. Like someone's going to steal my job. Like my job is not safe. And it kind of looks like Spates might have that same mindset. And if he's got that same mindset, the Michigan Wolverines are going to be set up for success this year. But Brandon, before we get to Swanee's final thoughts, any last impressions, last things you want to say about the Wolverines? I just think that, and and I could be completely wrong, and I, I very well might be, um, but I don't think that Michigan is going to have as easy of a time this season with their schedule, mainly because it's a good thing. I think the Big Ten is getting better. Yeah, it de- in my mind, too, it definitely is. Hey, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed a lot of emotion. If you want more, click this video right over my left shoulder. You will certainly not regret it.